What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Average Joe and JMO show. Hello. I'm the dad, the Average Joe. My name's Corby. And I'm the son. My name's Jameson. And everybody that loves me calls me JMO. So basically everyone. But wait, you don't call me JMO. Uh, Do you love me? <laughs> Do you? Of Do you? Of course I love you. Yeah, you better. You better love me. This week, what Anyways. are we doing? What are we doing this week? We're talking all things heavy metal, right? Oh yeah, we love metal music. We got four concerts to review for you today, wow. and uh, Eternal Frequency is the subject of our band rave, and we're going to be watching their brand new video, War, that's really starting to uh, gain a lot of following. So you got that to look forward to. Nice. And uh, we got a special surprise for the gang at Eternal Frequency uh, in that band rave. Whoa. Uh, so you're not going to want to watch. You're going to want to watch that. I'm having a hard time speaking today. Yikes. <laughs> so what four shows, uh, Jameson, are we reviewing today? Uh, well, the four shows are, we're going to talk about Rammstein. Oh, yeah. Eternal Frequency. Um, Varsity and a band called Alice Loves Alien. Yeah. You know what? Let's get it started with with Alice Loves Alien. Yeah. Um, we went there uh, on a tip that this band has a really good guitar player that shreds and a bass player that's a 16-year-old girl named Shannon Wilk. Now, when we went down there to check it out, there was a there were a few opening bands that were actually pretty good. Yeah, uh, Alter Ego. Alter Ego. They were they were cute. They had like a little poker uh poker suits on each one of their faces and uh, a lot of emo type stuff. Emo music, yeah. Yep, and then they were followed by, uh, was it Distortion, I think? Distortion, yeah, which was like... You know, they were... It they was sang like, a bunch of different type of stuff. They yeah, sang like, like Van Halen. Yeah, they did a uh, they did a, a, a cover of Primus, uh, Too Many Puppies. Too Many Puppies. <laughs> it sounded pretty cool. It actually sounded... And, and System of a Down. <laughs> yeah, they did System of a Down. Oh, oh, but oh. They, and one, and one. They did. Do, you know, I'm sorry. Like, uh, they're high school kids, and I'm gonna kill them. One was awful. Really? You <laughs> thought that was bad? I didn't think. I didn't think it was good. It was alright. Um, and then, um, Shannon came on uh, with Alice Loves Alien, and she's got it all. I mean, she's a beast. You're gonna want to remember this name because you're going to see her on the metal scene. Uh, in the future, and she's going to be around a while because she has the look, she has the maturity on stage, and she definitely has the skills. Oh, definitely. Um, you know what? Let's give them a let's give them a quick little clip uh, and some pictures of Shannon yeah. so they can see that. Here's the clip. All right, so that was Alice Loves Alien. That was a cool show. Uh, they are out of the Massachusetts, Connecticut area. So if you are in that area and you have a chance to check them out, it's worth it Definitely. Uh, to check out Alice and Alien. So Alice Loves Alien. Alice Loves Alien. See, how good of a review uh, can I actually give? Who knows? All right, next up. Who's next? Rammstein? Oh, yeah, Duhast. <laughs> um. Well, what can I say about Rammstein? Uh, almost everybody that is into metal music is well aware of who Rammstein is. And if you're not, then how are you? You're part under of the metal a rock. Scene? How are you part of the metal scene? You shouldn't be able to sleep at night if you haven't if you're in the metal scene and you haven't heard Rammstein. Yeah. Um, what I like about Rammstein is they do not sound like anybody else. I agree. They're to be honest, they're just a different breed. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if it's the precision of the German engineering or what, um, but everything about their show is spot on. Like, yeah. there, there's nothing that sounds sloppy. There's nothing that looks sloppy. We saw them in Giant Stadium uh, in the pouring rain. Which was really, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, but once they came on stage, I don't think it really mattered to anybody. No. In fact, there was so much fire at the show that it actually kind of kept you warm. Which was cool. It was. But they did a lot of cool stuff in that show. Like, um, they, Fireworks. They did a version of their song, Angle, um, where they were out like in the middle of the the stadium. They were out like on the field. 
Yeah, and like then they platform. actually climbed in like rubber rafts, and the people like pushed them. So like it like kind of brought crowd surfing. It was like, it was like actual crowd surfing. Yeah, <laughs> it's like crowd rafting. Yeah, crowd rafting. White 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 water crowd surfing. What was your what was your favorite part of that show? Though? Oh, Duhast, without a doubt. Yeah, Duhast was was pretty sick. Um, we put a, we put together a few clips. Um, we're gonna roll them so you could get an idea now. I just want to point out, like, our seats initially were, like, way into the upper deck. Like, we were the, yonder. The nosebleed seats. Um, and a big shout-out uh, to my friend Danny, uh, who works security at Giant Stadium. I kind of felt like I was connected. He got us down off to the side of the stage, close to the field, so we have kind of, like, a side view. Which was cool. You're still going to be able to see what we were talking about with the pyrotechnics. So, um, Here's a clip. Such a fun concert. Yeah, it, it was great. It was great. You know what I was surprised about uh, at that show was just how big the Mexican contingent uh, yeah. was. Yeah. Look, I mean, at the end of the tour, they had like three Mexico City tours. Right. And like in that clip, you know, if you look in the background, you'll see the camera panned by Jameson and the, the luchador was wearing the, the giant like sombrero and he had the modelo and, and in between every song. Right, he was like screaming. He was like Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> it was great though. It like really added to it. It really it was between every song, um, but yeah, I mean, it's been eleven years since Rammstein toured in America. And let's hope it's less. Yeah, let's hope it's not another eleven years. But uh, I think all of the I but I they had they had, they were really successful with this tour though. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if epicness is a real word. But uh, we're making it one. <laughs> but um, the epicness of this show, I, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, you could see the fireworks. Um, so if you ever get a chance to see Rammstein, and I think the tickets to that concert were like 110 bucks a piece. Yeah, which was crazy. sounds pretty steep. Um, and we had to wait three years for the show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got canceled twice in a row. But considering, like, tickets to see Motley Crue 
Joan Jett and Def Leppard and Poison were like, for like a decent seat was like 250 bucks minimum. Absurd. It's unfortunately the price in a lot of us out. So, um, but that's also why I prefer the the smaller venue uh, anyway. Because they're cheaper, but they're a lot of fun. Yeah, and you get a lot more um, up close access. So, uh, which brings us to Friday night. Oh yeah. Do you know what Friday night was? I don't know what was Friday night. It was my fiftieth birthday. Wow. <laughs> I actually knew. That. No, don't it worry. was actually uh, in Brooklyn. It was Ooh. a varsity concert, and our our chums at Eternal Frequency were one of the opening acts, as well as. Um, guys, you're a big fan of um, Monument of Memory, right? Oh yeah, uh, nice guys, right? We love those guys. The uh, who's your favorite mu- guy from Monument of Memory? To put oh. you on the spot, you got to have one favorite. Either Brett or Dylan. Nice. Dylan, the lead singer. Brett's the drummer. We saw we saw Brett a couple of times. Uh, we saw this Brett month. with a band called The Art of Deception. Yeah, that was uh, that was just straight up. Listen, Monument of a Memory by far and away is the best dressed metalcore band. I got to have a little chat with Josh Korea, the bass player of Monument of a Memory. Cool dude. And like this guy, when you talk to him, you think that he should be like somebody I should be playing against in Magic the Gathering. Like he just looks like anything but a metalcore bass player. Seems like a very smart guy. And right, and he's got a fiance who's cute as a button. Her name was Jocelyn, which incidentally was going to be what your name was uh, if you were born a girl. Wow. How do you feel about that? But anyway, Jocelyn was like sweet as pie, and then you uh, you have Joshua, um, who's just this very kind and very gentle guy. And then you fast forward an hour later when he's on stage, and he's literally jumping into the crowd. And slam dancing. And slam dancing, and Jocelyn's right there like a whirlwind, like she hit me in the back of the head once, uh, it, it, you know, crashed into my wife. But you just wouldn't expect it. It's like they, it's like somebody poured water on the gremlins. But check this out. I got a clip of of right. We got a yeah, clip. Yeah, we, we got a clip. All it right, was cool. We're gonna roll the clip. Yeah, that guy was nuts. That was crazy. And you know what's funny is, is at like ten minutes after the show is over, his hair's back in a ponytail, his glasses are back on, and he's back to being meek. Um, and the same thing with Jocelyn. Like I, I love people that aren't afraid to just let com- it out, like completely have fun. You know, they're not hurting anybody. They're not. Oh, no, yeah. Good for them. Now, Eternal Frequency, we're not. I mean, they were incredible, but we're not going to spend too much time on them mm-hmm. here. Because uh, they're our band rave, right? Yeah, they're our band rave. All right, so Varsity. Varsity. They've been one of your favorites for a while, right? Yeah, they're yeah, probably uh, one of my favorites. They're a cool band. Nice people. It was weird seeing them, because we've seen them before. We saw them... At, who- at, um, with... Uh, <laughs> I can't talk either. At a venue called Mickey's Black Box with 10 years... Oh, yeah, that's right. We're 10 years, and that's where we uh, met our good buddy Jay Hunter from iRock Radio. Um, but, yeah, they we saw yeah, they opened for 10 years in Black Map, so they were the first band to go on uh, of the three. And yeah. the one thing that stood out from that show was the amount of energy. Um, I, I don't know. what the, What's the singer's name? Jo- Joey. Joey? Joey, yeah. what, Varela or something like that? I have no... Uh, Joey. Joey. <laughs> Joey. <laughs> so... The only way I could really describe Eternal Frequency, and, and it's going to sound awkward, but it's actually a compliment, is it sounds like Michael Jackson. Behind sing- metal music. Right, over metal music. Um, you could definitely tell that there's a, a Michael Jackson influence, but, but it kind of works. It sounds um, cool. And even though they're kind of just starting out in the greater scheme of things... Um, They've gotten a lot of popularity since the first time we've seen them. Big, well, that and... Well, they headlined... Uh, on Friday, and that's where I was kind of going with this, but I'm just a little long-winded, is it was really fun to see them, like, when they're the man. Yeah. You know, and everybody's there to when see them. When they're the main character. Where, when we saw them the first time, they're out there, they're trying to impress new markets and new people, 
and, and they're playing in front of a lot of people that have never heard of them before. Well, they were on their home turf, and it was really a lot of fun um, seeing them yeah. um, in their element. But there was one thing was one thing that, that really impressed me, really, is, is people were buying shots, right, and they're sending them up. Um, and this might not mean anything to you because you're still young, but they were sending shots up, and, um, you know, rather than just sit there and pound the shots, he would take the shot, and then because we were off to the side, I saw him go in the back, and he spit the shot on the ground. Wow. Now, the reason why that's I- impressive to me is because – you're up there, you're concerned with giving people the best version of you for their money. Like, you know, if you go up there and you get sauced, you know, you're not really going to be... Uh, it's going to be sloppy. Right? It's going to be sloppy. And he wasn't so, even saying, like, guys, stop buying drinks. So, yeah, right. No, exactly. He, he, he was, wasn't, like, I, he I was honoring the people, right. He was honoring the people by, um, by taking the shot, but not dishonoring the people by getting hammered and barely able to play. You know, years ago I saw a band called the Four Non Blondes play. And, um the the lady was just so wasted like you just couldn't even like decipher the show. It was just couldn't even have fun. No, it was it was it was a bad job. So uh Varsity definitely uh two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Um definitely. and we got to chat with them a little bit afterwards. Joey, really yeah. really nice dudes. Really nice dudes. I like Joey those has guys. a very gentle handshake. Like he was like this. Give me your hand. He was like, yeah, it wasn't quite gentle. the dead fish. Like he gave you the like he gave you enough of a grip where you felt honored. Um, but my favorite part was when um, Justin from Eternal Frequency introduced you to him, and I, I was just standing in the back, you know, letting you do your thing because you work a room better than anybody else. Um, With bands, at least. Yeah. But I, I, when you walked away from him, I clearly heard him say, that boy has been raised right. And that makes me feel good. So, Joey uh, Varela, if that's your last name. We thank you. Um, very moving. Thank you. So, what do we got next? We got, the, we got the band rave, right? Band rave. All right. Let's check it out. Let's do our band rave. Let's Woo-hoo. go. Band rave. And what's the subject of today's band rave, bud? <laughs> Eternal frequency. What's that, about? what's that about? They scare me. I'm sorry. Eternal frequency. <laughs> Out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We love these guys. And girl. Yeah, uh, I agree. Female fronted metal band. You got to hear this girl's voice. You got to hear the guitar players, the drums, the bass player. Um, before I get into these, Tyler Travis, the bass player, has to be the most photogenic guy that I've ever seen. Every single picture you take of this guy, he looks like he is in absolute bliss. And he's he, he must be very athletic because he's always run, he's like running around like crazy on the stage. He, the, the dude's crazy. So. We caught up with this gang. Um, they did a Halloween show as part of a fundraiser uh, for a group called uh, Symbol of Hope Lancaster. Now, that's a, to the local community. They provide support uh, to people that are dealing with a host of uh, mental health issues and things like that. Um, we're going to leave a link down in the description so yep. you can uh, check them out. Uh, it's a great cause. Um, and there's all kinds of stuff that you can do. But getting back to the band, this was a Halloween benefit show, and we did not disappoint. We brought the mellow to this heavy metal show. Can anyone take a guess who we were for Halloween? John Lennon and Bob Ross. I was Bob Ross, and, and he I was, was John Lennon. John, we really did bring the mellow. And guess who won the costume contest? These guys right here. Uh, it was more John. It was more I think Lennon. it was more Lennon, without a doububt. Uh, you're a kid and you were going there. Lennon Strong. But so this show involved a lot of different uh, bands. We had Diversified. Who was Lynn Hurst. D- 
Diversified was great. Yes. To get it were. started, I mean, they were really good. We had Lynn Hurst, which is off the hook. Great people. Lives Lost. Lives Lost. Then the Art of Deception. Art of Deception. And speaking of Art of Deception, the drummer of My Name and Memory, Brett, is also the guitar player for that band, The Art of Deception. Oh, nice. Nice, yeah. No, we, we knew that. We talked to him before. Yeah. Um, but it was it was great. Uh, we also had Dinosaurs in Paris, uh, Cold Spring Union, which I was like it was a country a, band. You know, it was. It, but listen, they were great, um, and kudos to them because they were not like any of the other bands that were playing, and they still came and they still brought it. And they were wearing onesies. They were wearing <laughs> Bucky's, Bucky's onesies. onesies. <laughs> and I'm very jealous. I want to go to Bucky's so bad. And it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, Lynnhurst were all like the Pokemon characters. Yeah, Ash. And then the uh, yeah, and then the four the four bo- uh Pikachu. Yep, and then uh whatever. Big shout out to Defiant who was uh second to last. Defiant was missing their drummer due to illness. And uh instead of just mailing it in, they played an all acoustic set. And the dr- and who they used as a drummer was Lynnhurst's drummer. Lynnhurst's drummer drummed for Defiant, if that makes sense. Right, on one of those little percussion boxes. I, yeah, I have no idea what I'm means. a ham bone, so I don't know what these things are and called. And I'm a percussionist, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> but And then finally, Eternal comes out, and they're dressed all in a DC Comics of uh, villains. AJ and they bring, was the Scarecrow. Is Scarecrow. Amel and, was Harley Quinn. Yeah, she was a good Harley Quinn. Uh, Dane was Two-Face. Tyler was Tyler was the Riddler, the Riddler and Justin he, was oh go ahead no no he I was going to say he basically if if Jesus wore the Riddler costume you had Tyler Travis oh yeah <laughs> Jesus <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, of course did Justin was the Joker right yeah cuz he's a cuz he's a Joker and even with all that Bob Ross and John Lennon still win it what did we win bud show him what we won well we won a nice, beautiful guitar signed by all the bands. That's awesome. You know, I used to play guitar. Did you really? Yeah, you didn't know that? No. Watch. Here, I'll, g- I'll give you a demo. All right. So, this was a little number that I learned way back when I was a young. A number? Yeah, it's my best. Ready? See if you can guess it. Oh, I'm a little rusty. Yeah, but that's you're smoke really rusty. on the water. Smoke I, on the water. I knew that. Oh, I'm not done though. I I still got plenty in the arsenal. Watch <laughs> what this. do you have? Another number? See, I got another number. See if you can guess this one. And baby. Oh, I think I know this one. Talk dirty to me. Talk dirty to me by Poison. I think I'm so good. Gee, Dad, yeah, you're a We're just you're gonna... a you're a professional. But wait, 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 I can play guitar as well. Oh, you can. Yeah, here, grab the mic. Let's see what what JMO's got. <laughs> now I'm still learning, but <laughs> here's my number. It's not a bass. <laughs> I I I. <laughs> Is that, is that supposed to be Crazy Train? <laughs> Don't strum it so hard. You're going to wipe the signatures off of that. I'm so good. I'm, I'm better right, than you. So listen, enough with the monkey business. Monkey Eternal Man. Frequency has a brand new song out called War. Um, to me, this is by far and away their best song. Oh, yeah, it was cool. Um, I don't have time to do all three videos on this, um, but War is part three in a science fiction story that this group has told over three videos. Called the Step uh, Up Trilogy. And it's got a very powerful message. Um, and as far as I can tell, um, and I hope I don't do the band a disservice by saying this, but as far as I can tell, it's kind of along the lines of when our lives, the music business in their case, or things try to force us into a mold that's not us and tries to dictate what we should be opposed to what we are. Uh, So we're going to roll the video. 
uh, with our reactions, and I'll see you on the other side. Here's the clip. Eternal Frequency presents War. Tom Flynn did this video. And Kyle Monroe. Yeah, this guy's a genius. He's done a, a lot of Tom videos Flynn, for yeah. people. Tom Flynn's cool. I like that beat. I mean, I've heard the song. The song is ridiculous in a good way. Yeah. That's, that's scary. I'm coming for you. Oh, and now we get shot. It's got that eternal frequency double bass uh, Intensity. signature. Drums sound great. You're biased to the drums. What do you mean? Yes! I love it. You know, almost every reaction video people compare them to Hailstorm. I have no idea where that comes from. I know. No disrespect to Lizzie, but I think she doesn't have Amel's grit. I, I, I feel like Eternal Frequency sounds like Eternal Frequency. Makes the most sense. Well, put a lot of thought into that one. Wait for it. The vocal just kind of blows your hair back. Yeah, she sounds really angry. I think she's supposed to be really angry. Oh. Clones. You know, she had to do all of these movements like herself, like the CGI. That's cool. Must have been really difficult, though. Oh, actual now. That's great. Sick. I was solo. I have no idea how this is an indie band. Like, each one of these musicians is right there with anybody that you could think of. Oh, yeah, I agree. Especially the guitarists. Justin and AJ are great. Bass, Tyler. Awesome, Dane. Bad props to him for being what for being the drummer of Eternal Frequency. Hi, Mel. Do you have sauce for me? Whoa. The robot's gone. What's well, you know in the music industry they're always trying to fit you into a mold. She broke the mold if you ask me. I agree. I think so. And what I notice is all of their music videos look and sound very cool yeah no they definitely uh rock that's for sure oh for sure wow Wow! i thought war that was a phenomenal song and that um that music video was pretty badass you know i have this um song now on my playlist that i, I listen to 
Um, I have it among songs like Estranged by Guns N' Roses. I have it among um, all kinds of heavy metal. Metallica, the oh, Rammstein yeah. we talked about. Duas. And it's already there. Like, it sound, the sound quality is Like, you can tell that they invest so much that they put so much effort into their productions. I mean, I've heard some yeah. cheesy, cheesy um, bands that have more experience than them um, just not putting in the effort, but you can like s- Guns N' Roses, probably. <laughs> no. Probably. Hey, listen, Gun- Guns N' Roses. I I don't like Guns N' Roses. I well, I like no, the well, I like yeah, their music. You like their music. You just don't like the band members. And and uh, I, everyone's talking about Axel being a nice guy, and and he you know he probably is, but I single handedly do not like Guns N' Roses because Guns N' Roses was a big enough band that they could have carried. The glam rock and the metal music, they could have kept it in the mainstream for yeah. like another two years. And th- because their first album made them successful. And they couldn't, right, and they couldn't get along. Well, Appetite for Destruction is probably the single greatest, um, probably the single greatest opening uh, debut album I've ever heard. Oh, for sure. Until Eternal Frequency's debut album comes out. Because yeah. When is we, that? Um, they don't have it announced yet, but the, the quality... Uh, of those three songs, Step Up, AI, and uh, War, mm-hmm. I mean, can stand with any song out there. Their songwriting is is every bit. Just look at the lyrics of that song. Um, so go on Spotify. Definitely download uh, that song and check out uh, or their Apple other music. Mu- their other music. Yeah. Uh, now, listen, I, I had mentioned before that they uh, played on Friday night. They opened for Varsity, and it was my 50th birthday. And uh, I was very appreciative of that. That's not why they played the show, obviously, but I was appreciative that they spent some time with me. Uh, They gave me a nice uh, autographed bottle of tequila, um, which is nestled away in my liquor area that never gets drank. Uh, but we wanted to do something. I wanted to do something uh, to give something back. So we put together a little something special for this band rave, and I hope that they enjoy it. And we hope you guys enjoy we it. We hope that you guys enjoy it too. So here you go. Here's uh, this. Am- Amel, this is mostly for you um, because you are cuter than the rest of the band. But the guys do get a, uh, an, honorable, an honorable mention. We do get an honorable mention. So I hope you enjoy. Check it out. Amelified. Five bright stars on the metal scene. They are eternal frequency. Justin Tyler, AJ Dane, and Amel the Metal Queen. Coming out of Lancaster, let's go, it's time for the show, gotta make sure we get front row, we're banging our banging our heads, Amel's voice is heavy metal beautified, she sings F-bombs in your face but you don't mind, cause she's sweet inside, step up war, AI downhead like a whole, breathe in, breathe out and parasite. They're, They're our favorite songs. I'm mellified. Who, 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 who? We like an insanity, but she says it stinks. She sings sober better than pink. Hey, hey, hey. Boom, boom, sauce on the chicken tendies. That's what she recommended to me. Don't, Don't forget, forget the Diet Coke. Oh no, where did it go? Supposed to get merch three weeks ago. They canceled it, canceled it, dude. I can't rep because your shirts don't come in my size. I guess I'll have to go out and get exercise to fit a smaller size. 
Her hair was green, she sings queen, it was Harley Quinn on Halloween, don't be surprised. When she makes Disney songs, Bella Fied. Go! I hope you like it. Woo! Have a good night. Band rave. All right. That's going to about do it for this week's uh, episode. Lots of fun. If you listen to us and you made it this far, we are grateful. Make sure that you give a like and hit the subscribe button. If you made it this far, type in eternal frequency. <laughs> Either that or cookie. Yeah, cookie. No, I got a better idea. Okay. So me and him are both very, very silly and we're very, very lighthearted. Um, but one of the things that we are very serious about are the charities that we back. Yes. Um, and one of the charities, I'm going to pull my phone up and be unprofessional, but one of the charities that we support is the Epilepsy Foundation. And I'm going to read you guys a couple of statistics. A third is the number of people with epilepsy that live with uncontrollable seizures because there's no available treatment that works for them. Um, six out of ten is the number of people with epilepsy where the cause of it is completely unknown, okay? 3.4 million is the number of people in the United States who have active epilepsy. Wow. And 1 in 26 people in the United States will develop epilepsy at some point in their life, which probably means that if you have 26 or more friends, you know somebody with epilepsy. Um, this is a disease that really really devastates a person um, and really does its best to prevent somebody from living a normal, happy, and fulfilling life. It, it, it affects someone mentally and physically. If you uh, know somebody with epilepsy, uh, if you have it in your heart to help people with epilepsy we're going to put the link to the epilepsy foundation there the i know that this is a cause um that's close to a lot of people including uh eternal frequency mm -hmm. um so on behalf of them and on behalf of just decent humanity um head over to the epilepsy uh foundation uh i'll see if i can quickly find this um address for you it is www.epilepsy.com, uh, and you can uh, help out by heading over there. Um, you know anybody with epilepsy, bud? Um, actually, yeah, I know two people. Uh, yeah. First one is a, a friend of mine, Elias. He has that. He was diagnosed with epilepsy. Right. Which could have affected football for him. Yeah, so, I mean, everybody knows somebody. So, please, um, you help where you can, uh, when you can. Um, and with that said, you know, thanks for that. Also, please, uh, the mental health stuff uh, at um, Symbol of Hope Lancaster. Um, there's always something that we can do uh, to help out uh, each other, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so next week. Next week, I think we are going to be doing our fishing derby. Oh yeah, um, we and love then those. and then down the road we got uh you got a couple of more concerts. I know I'm not able yeah. to go, but you're going to see one coming up, right? I'm going to see a, a, one of my favorite bands, Ice Nine Kills, with Motionless and White, Blackfield Brides, and another good band and another band that I really love, Atreyu. Atreyu is good band. Atreyu is awesome. Um, so you got love Brandon Toller. You got that coming up, and I'm pretty sure I think we got an Eternal Frequency Christmas show coming up. Wow! And oh, very important. I should have did this during uh, during the band rave, but I'm going to do it now. Starting November 11th, the Central Pennsylvania Music Awards will be opening up their nominations. Rock Music Awards. Jameson and I are personally asking everyone to please. Head over to the website. I'm going to put that link uh, in the description as well. Um, and cast your vote uh, to nominate Eternal Frequency. Um, we, uh, When we won that guitar, we also won tickets to that. So we get to go do the whole red carpet thing and 
put suits on and mosh pit and no suits. mosh pit and suits it's not like that <laughs> oh man uh, just his lamb dancing and i you. personally would think it would be pretty lame if i won tickets or we won tickets to uh uh to the central pennsylvania awards and eternal frequency didn't get an award that would just be kind of a if they don't get an if they don't get an award uh and a reward i'm just gonna hug the people there i'm gonna hug them and say give them an award Okay, we talked a little bit about them. Next week's band rave is going to be Monument of a Memory. Oh, yeah. So we like to support those indie bands. Now, if you guys have a band that you want us to check out, um, put it in please the comments. put it in the comments, uh, and we'll, we'll get to it, and we'll check them out. Uh, we love all kinds of live music, but we like to especially support the uh, indie, indie music. music scene. Uh, if you're kind of new to heavy metal music and you want uh, a variety, where can they get it from? iRockRadio.me. Yep, our good friends at iRockRadio.me, also at Lancaster, can uh, play a great variety of music. Yes. So uh, you're at your office at work, you got a computer, maybe you don't have uh, your phone handy or whatever, you can just log into them and... Get all of your metal favorites going all the way back. You get everything from the Motley Crew and the ACDC all the way up to Eternal Frequency. So uh, definitely check that out. And with that said, if you're part of the metal, uh, if you're part, if you're new in the metal scene, welcome to the family. <laughs> so with that said, if you like what you heard, you like what you saw, please leave. Uh, please uh, give us a like. Subscribe to the channel. That'll help other people find us. It'll also give us. Uh, you know, more momentum to make uh, better and more modern content for you guys. Yep. So with that said, have a good night. Signing off. And uh, last but not least, oh. if you're suffering, 988. Yes. For, if, you're, if you're feeling like uh, you want to mail it in and life is too hard, 988 is the number that you call with a suicide hotline. Yes. Have a good night.